Hello, my name is Dr. Nabarun Ghosh. I'm a professor of biology of the life, earth, and environmental sciences of the West Texas A&M University. I'm going to talk about antibiotic resistance, generation of superbugs, and public health. Firstly, I'm going to deliver the lecture in English, and then I'm going to explain it um, in Bengali um, afterwards. Little bit background um, in my academics. The, uh, I got my Bachelor of Science with honors from University of Calcutta, India, Bachelor of Education degree in Education and Psychology from University of Calcutta, Master of Science in Cytogenetics and a doctoral degree in Cytogenetics from University of Calcutta, India. After coming to the United States, I got my first PhD degree um, over there at the University of North Texas. And that was again after uh, my doctoral degree from uh, University of Calcutta, India. I also had my postdoctoral research done uh, from the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. With that, I'm going to focus on the antibiotic resistance um, <clears throat> that are leading to the generation of superbugs or the bacteria that are totally resistant to any antibiotic. A few of the pictures, as you can see here, um, with my research students, we are examining here the plates, bacterial plates with uh, transformation of bacteria. So let me explain, transformation is the process by which the bacteria, they can pick up the genes. They can pick up the genes from their environment and they transform themselves, okay? So a bacterial cell can be transformed to acquire the antibiotic resistance. So our publication, as I'm focusing here, reduction of MRSA populations, MRSA or MRSA, that's methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, we had this publication, um, how we can reduce the number. That's the publication we had earlier. And uh, that was because we picked up the project as many of my um, colleagues and local physicians, they were talking about the MARSA or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. They were kind of prevalent at that time I'm talking about. And what happened um, whenever a patient was having some surgery, um, they were coming back with 50% uh, of them, according to the surgeon's report, 50% of them were coming back with the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus infection. In the picture, as you can see, my research student, Cynthia Pratt, is working in the laboratory with the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Um, Cynthia worked for almost three years at the BSA hospital um, with a project with methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which we were trying to reduce the population and infection. Now here we I'm trying to focus the steps, as you can see the steps of, um, you know, how the bacterial cells can acquire antibiotic resistance and what is antibiotic resistance. When first developed antibiotics or the pills to kill bacteria and cure infections, over time, as you can see the picture it shows here, they started developing defend to defend themselves. So this is a natural phenomenon you will find in all kinds of living organisms, including, including the prokaryotic cells like bacterial cells, they can acquire antibiotic resistance. And these antibiotic resistance they pick up for their own survival. And there may be some generation of the bacterial cells which 
acquire antibiotic resistance. Here they are showing how you know the efflux pump eject antibiotics from bacteria so they can develop that methodology, the technique in themselves. Bacterial proteins can destroy antibiotics. They can get mutated so that the, you know, and mutate their proteins. So those proteins cannot be targeted by the antibiotics. So um, with that, we'll move to the next slide talking more about what are the mechanisms behind antibiotic resistance. Microorganisms use many strategies to defend themselves against antibiotics. They can acquire genes encoding efflux pumps that eject antibiotics from their cells. They can evolve mutated versions of the proteins that the antibiotics normally interact with. They can even obtain genes encoding proteins that destroy antibiotics. Regardless of the mechanism, the genes encoding antibiotic resistance are easily shared between microorganisms. For example, these genes may be found on the extra chromosomal pieces of DNA called plasmids. I'm coming to that point to explain more about what are the plasmids and how basically they can acquire the antibiotic resistant genes. Plasmids spread through microbial mating and can even be taken up from the environment. Viruses can also spread resistance genes between microorganisms. Also, physicians sometimes prescribe antibiotics unnecessarily because standard diagnostics tests are too long and that can be too slow process and it is time consuming. In these cases, antibiotics are the easy solutions. While potentially effective in the short term, this exposes more microorganisms to antibiotics than necessary. It pushes resistance to evolve sooner. Some of the antibiotic resistant bacteria. The most commonly reported resistant bacteria are E. coli, very common one in human intestine and mammalian intestine. We find Escherichia coli or E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus or Staph aureus, and Streptococcus pneumoniae, followed by Salmonella species. These are very ba common bacteria, okay? And uh, when they basically become antibiotic resistant, they can be very much, uh, very dangerous, and they can do harm, and it is very difficult to kill them. And most worrying of all, pathogens don't respect international borders. We realize that with the recent outbreak and pandemic uh, with the COVID-19 cases. I was talking about plasmid. Let's try to uh, understand what the plasmid is. Let me read the definition first here. Plasmids are extra genomic, covalently closed circular DNA molecule found in bacterial cells that confer flexibility and variability to bacterial species. In simple way, let's look at this is a bacterial cell. As you can see, there is a bacterial DNA, which is a single loop of DNA. That's the bacterial genome. And you can see the plasmid here, which is a ring-like structure. The interesting part about the plasmid, the bacteria can acquire the genes that can be inserted in the plasmid. They can have those genes and they can get mutated and they can transfer this plasmid to their uh, similar strains of bacteria. And that's how they acquire a huge number of bacterial population may become antibiotic resistant. And they start multiplying their plasmid and distribute all over. It can replicate independently of the chromosomes 
Typically, a smaller circular DNA strand in the cytoplasma bacterium or some protozoan. Plasmids are much used in the laboratory manipulations of genes. Sometimes in biotechnology nowadays, we can insert the gene inside the plasmid and transfer that plasmid to desirable uh, organisms, and we can clone them by this process. Without a specific diagnosis, a physician may also prescribe antibiotics, like broad spectrum antibiotics, that are very much effective with many infections, but their use also prompts the evolution of resistance in many bacteria. I mentioned earlier, the bacteria, they can get mutated easily because they want to survive. Okay, so this development of resistance is just one part of their survival mechanism. With a more specific diagnosis, a physician could prescribe a narrow spectrum antibiotic, such an antibiotic would kill a limited number of bacterial species more precisely. This would slow the evolution of the resistance. Beyond the clinic, farmers also use antibiotic um, and to basically train their animals and to prevent crop disease. This exposes microorganisms on the farm to antibiotics and could drive the evolution of resistance. Some livestock procedures even use antibiotics to boost the growth of the, their animals we discuss about the germ-free animals, whether they have infections or not. The WHO recommends putting a stop to this growth promoting use. In the US, the FDA has rules intended to prevent the growth promoting use of antibiotics. The reason for our discussion, and I know the current project as it is led by Science City in Calcutta, I appreciate that very much because look at the data uh, from CDC or Center for Disease Control in the United States of America. The deaths, the deaths attributable to antibiotic resistance every year by 2050 onward look at the number, it's very much scary. And more towards, as you see, out of 10,000 population, there will be close to, you know, 10 people will be dying in different places, including Asian countries, and maybe seven to eight, somewhere in North America uh, and Africa, there are more antibiotic resistance in the developing countries. How antibiotic resistance happen? You can see the, there are lots of germs as it is focused here. I'm running the arrow. You can see one just developed antibiotic resistance that's being multiplied to many. And then finally, some bacteria give their drug resistance to other bacteria. Now, there are a few steps that are showing how basically antibiotic usage can uh, result into antibiotic resistance and that can be transferred from basically one organism to another. And it is basically transferring in the population from one person to another. How does antibiotic resistance arise? As I mentioned earlier, microorganisms evolve antibiotic resistance naturally. Yet this evolution is accelerated through the overuse of antibiotics. Once evolved, microorganisms can rapidly share their defenses with one another. One example of overuse is prescribing antibiotics for injections that they cannot fight. For instance, antibiotics might prescribed for viral infections despite the fact that antibiotics have no effect on viruses. The CDC or Center for Disease Control estimates that similar 
unnecessary use of antibiotics make up 30% of hospital prescriptions. And I'm giving you data from United States CDC. Antibiotic resistance threatens everyone. Antibiotic resistance happens when germs like bacteria and fungi develop the ability to defeat the drugs designed to kill them. That means the germs are not killed and continue to grow. That's a major threat to mankind. Infections caused by antibiotic resistant germs are difficult and sometimes impossible to treat. In most cases, antibiotic resistant infections require extended hospital stay, additional follow-up doctor's visits, and costly and toxic alternatives. For example, the first antibiotic, as all of you know, penicillin, that was commercial, commercialized antibiotic. The first one, first commercialized antibiotic was discovered in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. Ever since, there has been discovery of acknowledgement of resistance alongside the discovery of new antibiotics. In fact, germs will always look for ways to survive and resist new drugs. More and more germs are sharing their resistance with one another, making it harder and harder for us to keep up. Well, lastly, I'm going to show you the list here. There are good numbers of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Look at the date, 1941, first time it was reported, antibiotic penicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus was discovered, 1942. Next one, Staphylococcus pneumonia, 1967. Neisseria gonorrhea in 1976. Remember, penicillin was used very widely as a broad spectrum antibiotic, 1958 vancomycin. And you can see all the way 1960, methicillin, I have been talking about methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is still a threat, as I mentioned. So till today, there are generations of many antibiotic resistant bacteria, which basically, again, a threat to mankind because there is always a competition between producing new and new hybrid antibiotic. And there is a failure recorded that antibiotic is used, but we cannot save the patients because that antibiotic is uh, override by the bacterial system. Just like I mentioned, using their plasmid, using their genome, they uh, began to learn how to fight against antibiotics. Last thing from this lecture, I'm going to discuss about steps to be taken to stop the antibiotic resistance. Stop overuse and misuse of antibiotics by seeking advice from a qualified health professional before using antibiotics. Take proper and exact dose of antibiotic prescribed by the physician. Most of the cases, it is not followed by the patients. If prescribed antibiotics, following a health professional's advice on how to take them. Educating family and friends about antibiotic resistance. Prevent the spread of infection by washing hands regularly, preparing food hygienically, keeping vaccinations up to date. With that, I will stop here and continue my discussion with uh, the next part. Thank you.